Hi, everybody. It's Matt from The Pen Habit. I just got done doing about four takes of this intro. I tried to introduce the video like I do the videos for my uh, my audiobook company, and that didn't work out so well. So <laughs> try it again. Move on. Okay. Uh, in today's video, I'm going to be talking about a brand of pen that I just became aware of. Uh, they've been around for a little while. It's an American brand that makes their pens, I believe, in Taiwan or China. I, I can't remember which. Um, Based, but the company is based in uh, Pennsylvania, and it is spelled. And I'm going to write it out here so you can see what how it's spelled, and then uh, you'd think Nemo sign, Nemo sign, Nemo scene. Uh, I believe that the pen company is named after uh, a Greek goddess named Mnemosyne. It's spelled completely differently, completely differently. But that's how I'm going to go ahead and pronounce this this pen brand for for now, Mnemosyne. It's an interesting pen. I got it online, um, uh, uh, the FP Geeks forum. Someone was trying to get rid of it. I bought it, I think, for $18 or something like that. This is the Namasani Fission. Uh, it's a, I'll just kind of go, go over the pen look with you here. It's got a nice uh, kind of rounded top, chromed clip here with a big N on the top of the clip. It's got a, it looks like a double ring on the cap, but it's actually a single ring on the cap plus a uh, the ring around the section here. Um, well, well, we'll get to the, in, the section and barrel in just a moment. And then this ring around the bottom of the pen is can actually be used to screw the cap on. So you don't have to worry about the cap coming undone, uh, which I think is kind of a neat little, little functionality. And then of course the pen goes to a nice rounded shape on the end. Uh, the the pen, this pen is kind of their navy blue. It feels like enamel, but I don't know that it is enamel. I suspect it's probably not. I don't know exactly what the material is, whether it's a, a paint or something like that, but it feels kind of like an enamel. The section is made out of chrome, um, and it looks like, and it looks like, you know, this might, this whole thing might be the section up to here, but it turns out that the section actually ends right by the threads. Uh, it's a converter cartridge pen, cartridge converter pen, and the whole body is metal, which makes this a slightly heavier pen, but not perhaps as, as heavy as you might expect for a fully metal bodied pen. This pen feels solid. I mean, it feels solid, 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 and um, it feels well made, uh, even more so than the, like, for instance, the Jinhao X450, which is a pen I like a lot and have several of. This feels really, really well made. Now, on the website, on the Namasani website, they have a. This pen is listed at fifty dollars. However, I have seen them in other places like xfountainpens.com for $25, uh, so which I think xfountainpens.com is related to Namasani in some way or form. The nib is what appears to be a relatively standard number six size nib, and it's a Namasani branded nib. It says made in Germany, and on the websites that I've seen, they, they say it's a German nib, as opposed to being Iridium Point Germany or IPG. They say this is a German nib. Now, this particular nib doesn't have an iridium point because it's a it's a stub, and I'll again get to that in just a moment. Um, it's got a really beautiful, almost butterfly-like uh, engraving or embossing on the nib. Uh, and this nib is a 0.6 millimeter stub, which is unusual. You don't find a lot of stub nibs commercially available stub nibs in 0.6. They also have a 0.8 millimeter stub, which I like. I like a 1.1 millimeter stub, which is kind of the standard, but it's a bit too wide for my style of writing. And, you know, it's funny because I get letters all the time from people who say, oh, I'm using a 1.1 millimeter stub and their lines are tiny. And when I, you know, write with a 1.1 millimeter stub, it looks like I'm using a, 
a big tipped sharpie. It's you know it's like so having a much finer finer stub on this pen is is it's a nice surprise. And if these are in fact standard number six size nibs, as I suspect they are. I probably will find myself getting one or two of the nibs standalone, which you can get either from the Nemosyne website or from xfountainpens.com, and uh, and replacing a couple of 1.1 millimeter stubs with these because I I would much prefer a 0.6 or a 0.8 millimeter stub than a 1.1. Uh, the specs on the pen: so it is 32 grams in weight which is, as I mentioned, a little on the heavy side, and that's without the cap. With the cap, it is 46. So um, it's actually, in my hand anyway, despite being a little on the long side, it's pretty well balanced. With Even with the cap posted, it doesn't tip back at all. It feels very comfortably balanced. I'm actually quite surprised. But there's, for my hand anyway, there's just no need to post it. It, it actually works quite well without being posted. The section is a little on the slick side, so if you're one of those people for whom a slick section bugs you, I am not one of those people. But if you are, uh, you might want to avoid this pen or, or you know, spray it with glue or something. I don't, don't spray it with glue. I'm joking. Um, uh, the pen is the, the sorry, lost my train of thought. The train of thought derailed. The section is 10.3 millimeters at its narrowest spot, which is right in exactly the width area that I like when I grip a pen. And then the widest part of the barrel is about 14.3 millimeters. It's 129 millimeters long, uncapped. Capped, it is 139 millimeters. And posted and screwed in all the way posted, you're looking at a relatively long 179 millimeters. But... Like I said, for a pen I paid 18 bucks for, may have cost 25 bucks when it was first uh, put out. It's a nice pen. It's a really nice pen, and the nib performs surprisingly well. Um, you know, I I know that with a lot of Chinese pens, there's concern about quality and longevity of the pen. This, as I mentioned before, feels absolutely solid to me. It, you know, this this is a pen I would have zero qualms sticking in a pocket or sticking in a you know sticking in my shirt to take to work handing to a friend it's inexpensive enough that i don't think anyone could ruin it um you know just by basic writing so let's uh let me stop palavering here and do a little bit more of a writing sample show you how it works show you a little bit more about this uh, 0.6 millimeter stub nib and go from there so here we go Okay, well, as you see, I've already spelled the name out. So, um, with my hopefully correct pronunciation, Nemosyne, Nemosyne, that's a that's a tongue twister right there. I think the uh, the original spelling is, if I'm remembering, Nemosyne. I think that's how it's the the Greek goddess's name is spelled. Uh, Okay, so this is the Nemosyne Fission. And we have a steel 0 0.6 millimeter stub for the nib. And the ink is Pelican, Ilstein, Venturine. And I always want to put a D in there, but I don't think there is one. I don't think the stone actually has a D in its name. All right. And this, this ink, by the way, is a very beautiful kind of emeraldy green color, a little bit darker than an emerald green, but uh, very, very nice green. And, you know, the Edel, Edelstein line, Stein, however it's pronounced. I don't do German. Uh, <laughs> the Edelstein line uh, is actually quite, quite a nice line. I love their bottles. The inks are well behaving for me. They tend to run a little bit drier than, say, an Iroshizuku ink, uh, but still, they seem nicely lubricated. And you know, I love green inks. This is one of this is one of my favorite greens. So, uh, our quote for today. Let me find a paper. Here we go.
All right, Mr. Ziegler there, dosing out the wisdom. Okay, so, you know, I have to say, I've had mixed experiences with stub nibs. There are a lot of people out there who really love their stub nibs. And up until I got my last pen, which is the, uh, the one I talked about in my last video, which is the Conway Stewart 14, I didn't really under, I never had a stub nib that I liked. And I think the difference is a lot of the less expensive stub nibs that you find today don't have iridium tips on them. They just go straight to the metal. Uh, you know, they, they don't bother even tipping it, just go straight to the metal and grind it down. And so the writing performance will change over time. But I just, I don't know, I've never felt with a stub nib, the pen just really glow or flow across the page like it does with just a perfectly tuned round tip pen. And you're, you're not going to get that as much with stub nibs. They're not going to be as smooth as round nibs. Uh, that being said, this stub nib is one of the smoother stubs I have ever used. Uh, it, it writes quite nicely. I've not had any problems with the ink flow, but it's not a terribly wet nib either. You know, I could increase the wetness by, uh, by you know, flossing the nib and trying to spread the tines just apart a little bit. But, you know, it's nice to have some pens that are, are a little on the wet side and some that are a little on the dry side, so you can use different pens depending on the situation. Um, and I think I'm probably going to keep this one. It's not dry per se. It, it's just very moderate, I would consider. And, and in my experience, pretty consistent, at least with the, the couple inks I've tried it with. Um, you're not going to get a lot of, of line variation on this nib. It's, it's, it's a nail. It's a smooth nail, but it's a nail. But you will do get the line variation. You'll notice I keep doing these cross hatches. Look at the, the difference between the downstroke and the cross stroke there. Uh, so this, I find a nib that a, a stub I can use on a daily basis, you know, taking notes and things like that, where I might not feel comfortable doing the same thing with a 1.1 millimeter because it just makes my handwriting so large. I can keep my handwriting its natural size and still use this nib. And I think, you know, there are a lot of relatively inexpensive, nicely designed, Nothing spectacular, you know, and, and that's this pen. There's nothing like earth shattering about this pen, really. Uh, it's very comfortable to hold. I find it to be a very nice weight, unposted. Posted, I find it to be a little on the heavy side. But what to me makes this pen so engaging is the nib. It's a nice nib and it's a nice, unusual size nib, one you don't find very often. So, uh, in general, I'm surprised at how much I enjoy this. Now, Namosini has another uh, another pen line. So this is the Fission line. They also have a line called Singularity. And I believe they're coming out with another one. Uh, there's something on their, their website called Stockist, and it just says coming soon. I don't know what that's all about. The, the Singularity line is made of acrylic. I believe, and this and the the fission line is made of metal. So the singularity line is cheaper and lighter, but comes with the same same nibs. So if you wanted a, a pen that to try one of these 0.6 or 0.8 millimeter stub nibs, you've never tried one before and don't want to spend a lot of money, maybe take a look at the Namosini Singularity versus the Namosini uh, Fission. So that is my review of the Fission. I'm surprised at how much I enjoy this pen. It's a nice pen, good weight, great nib, feels solidly built, uh, much more so than any of the other metal bodied pens that I've gotten uh, from China with the possible, I mean, the, the Impressa, which is in my top five at the moment, is a beautifully built pen. This is heavier. It feels a lot more solid and hefty, um, but they both, to me, feel like they have the same level of, of craftsmanship in them. So that's been my experience with it. I haven't had the pen a long time, but uh, maybe at some point in the future, I'll do a follow-up and let you know if the pen holds up over time. That's going to do it for this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Like or subscribe the video. And uh, don't forget to check out the links below as well for all of my social media haunts and head over to penhabit.com to see all the additional photos that I didn't get to show in the video. 
Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. I've really enjoyed making these, making these videos over the last several months and the, uh, the wonderful reception I've gotten from a lot of great people. So thank you. There will be more coming over time. And, uh, and we'll see you here next time on The Pen Habit. Bye.